this week's episode. Um, we have Jackie and Nathaniel Garza here, who's an artist, and he's going to talk to us um, about his career and stuff. <laughs> yeah, so Nathaniel, one of the reasons why I asked him, he's one of the mentors for the Young Arts exhibition. Um, one of the reasons why I asked him to be a mentor is because he's 17 years old. He's already like won art contests, like you're going to regionals on one of them, right? Um, he's been on the news. Um, he's already sold art pieces. He sold prints. Um, and so I think he's a really good example for the younger artists that are coming up. Um, just to get out and do stuff and be active with your art career early so that by the time he's going to college or an adult he can or he's already established basically and i feel like that's something like pearl and i have talked about like we admire because he has um supportive family supportive mom who's knows how to lead him and we think that that's super important i think i want to have like a episode where we talk with just her to kind of encourage parents but today's about nathaniel so we want to talk about like how it started like where did you start how old were you okay so basically when i was like two or three i started scribbling i first started scribbling around the wall of our house oh gosh so <laughs> yeah <laughs> my mom was kind of acting crazy about that but right. um yeah and then i remember like when i was younger like elementary i always loved drawing and mm -hmm. doing art um things you know being in art classes you know and um when basically when i was like i think it was my 12th birthday and i saw I started watching videos of like Bob Ross paintings and so I'm like hey um, mom I want paints and canvases for my birthday so she was like oh okay and then um, yeah that's when I basically started painting I used acrylic though first okay. and then um, I began making more and more paintings and then so you started off painting Yes. Oh my goodness. I did. You're and, so brave. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, when I was 13, I partnered with the Autism Treatment Center. Right. And that's when I first met Cynthia. And then uh, I had my first art show at the Brick at Blue Star. Oh, it was, cool. it was, it was, I think it's 13th anniversary event. Okay. So it was for sure packed. Right. I did got a lot of exposure. And that's then. Good. How old were you? 13. I was okay, just 13. So yeah. And then, 13 year anniversary and then you were 13. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> yes. Like, and then, what else? Um, later, I think um, I, I think I did like um, an interview with Fox 29 for the Art for Autism of 2018. Okay. And then, um, yeah, and then we did, it was so cool, like, we took shots in this little house at La Palita, mm -hmm. and I forgot the name of it, I should have known the name, but they had a lot of, it was a small art shop, mm -hmm. and, you know, it has a lot of cool, like, handmade necklaces, jewelry, okay, right. and also paintings, too, cultural yeah. paintings, and then, um, also, at the same, the same year, um, I, I joined, um, what was it called? Fiesta Especial, which was a program, uh, with Di Disability SA. It's okay. basically where, um, they encourage everyone with, um, different kinds of disabilities, uh, to, to basically be in a royal court for, you know, Fiesta. Oh. And to raise awareness, basically. So cool. I remember I raised over a thousand and twelve dollars. Wow. I, I forgot the number, but I did raise money uh, to the Autism Treatment Center. That's awesome. Which did give me a title of- uh, With your art? Uh, um, I actually uh, raised money with uh, the world's finest chocolates. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and also my art. Those are good. But awesome. uh, yeah. And then I was given the title as Count, which is one of those royal titles. Okay. You know, and then I remember like we took trips um, to visit schools to, um, 
what was it called? What Fia, what loyal courts do like in Fiesta? They oh, visit, they do those visits yeah. at hospitals and schools. I know what you mean like they go like um like to help like little kids feel better. And yes, stuff, like, yeah, we we we, ca- we did that, but we also did that to raise uh, spread awareness. Like we went to Sunshine Cottage, which was a school for uh, deaf children. Oh. Um, so that that was that was a cool experience. And then um, I remember we walked around the Flambeau Parade. We were in the Flambeau Parade. We were in the river. We watched the river parade. Like it was so fun. And then um, what else? Um, I did some TV appearances also when I was 13. Like I'm trying to figure out. I think I remember seeing one of your videos. Oh uh, yeah. And you looked a lot younger. <laughs> I was. I was. I was 13. I'm 17. Now. So, <laughs> uh, I forgot what it was called, what the TV program was called. Um, I think it was, no, it, I think it was Ken 5, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, but it probably was Ken 5, because probably. I think when I mentioned to your mom about um, when we were on Ken 5, she said, oh yeah, he was on Ken 5 um, a few years ago. Yeah, it was Ken 5. Yeah. <laughs> if she said that, then it was Ken 5. Yeah. Um, and then... Well, in 2, you did it, was it Ken 5 again at the Autism Treatment Center um, just recently? I think so, yes. Oh, it was um, Great Day Essay, right? Yeah, it was Great Day Essay. I think what I did, though, was Living Essay or... Okay. Um, one of the other shows yeah basically (laughs) and then what else also at 13 um um they wanted us to this the autism treatment center wanted us to display artwork at the airport the san antonio airport oh yeah which uh which i did and that was also um very fun you know um so you had art at the airport too the airport yeah the the international airport at san antonio what pieces did you have it was an old piece. It was a it was a landscape with like a. Oh, okay, one of your old landscapes. It was one of my old landscapes. Okay. So yeah, and then um, I remember at fourteen, I went to, I participated at base, which is like um, a regional event for like all um, art schools and schools with art classes where everyone goes, and then their artwork gets judged. And then they work in workshops, which I did. And then um, I remember I won regionals, but um, we didn't get to go to state because COVID hit during my freshman year. Okay. So, uh, and I remember during COVID, I it was hard because there were no art shows, nothing at right, all. Right, nothing was going Basically on. Basically hard. It was it was hard. It hit it hit my family as well. You know, my dad and my older brother lost their jobs. Yeah. We lost. Yeah. So. It was very hard, uh, especially, you know, like, e- even for Fiesta Especial, it was hard, you know, we couldn't even do Good, Fiesta yeah, events, yeah. so, right. yeah, and then, um, and then in my sophomore year, I remember I won regionals for bass, and then... What is bass? Bass, it's a um, visual arts school classic event, it's a... Um, it's a program made by the Texas Art Education Association. Oh, okay. And so is it something that, like, like if other people were interested in it, is it something still going on that they could, like, apply it's, for? It's, or mo- is it- it's mostly for, like, um, for um, 12, from, like, pre-K to senior okay. in high school, basically. Okay. It's, like a, it's like a school thing. There's some schools that are actually required, and there's some schools that chose to participate oh, okay. and for like like I said it's for like students who are in art class or right. AP art okay. basically so it's something like the art teacher kind of like offers to, to you yes, to like if basically. you want to submit you can yeah basically okay. and then uh, like I said there's some required I'm required especially required. of course yeah since I'm an AP um, but uh, yeah and uh, I remember also in sophomore year I won state there was no state event though because it was all digital okay and so, <laughs> so and then um last year my junior year i didn't really went to that much art shows because everything was still um relying on covid guidelines oh, right yeah. and um so i feel like this year it's definitely chilling out yeah it, it definitely it's like going back to normal what i mentioned i forgot Oh, I forgot to mention, I also submitted artwork to the school lab, 
Scholastic Art and Writing, which okay. is national. And uh, I started that in my sophomore year. And then I won a Gold Key Award and an honorable mention. And then last year I also won a Gold Key on this work right here. Oh yes, these um, are these works behind us are actually his. These are his hyper-realism pieces. Yeah. So I have like the Las Vegas Bell. A lot of people come in and think they're like photography. Photos. <laughs> and I'm like, no, like if you look close, you'll see. Yeah. But yeah, he has his Uno cards and then over golf there, ball. the golf ball. I made a new golf ball oh, yeah, recently. You have a new yeah. golf ball, so, yeah. yes. He's super good at hyper-realism and, and oil landscapes now, yes. right? Yes, yes. Well, I'm good at both of them. I'm really good at. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's kind of weird because your landscapes are like so like, it's not like your hyper realism. Like the hyper realism is just crazy to me. But then your landscapes have like a different color tone where they're not as bright and they're kind of like it looks like a little storms happening or like some yeah. weather is going on and yeah. it's just like a really calming like peaceful landscape versus when these are like Wah! in your face with like color and everything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's like two completely different sides of you. Yes, definitely. Um, Last year you did do, um, you submitted to the Young Arts in Miami. Oh yeah, I did. Or wait, was it? Yeah, it was last year. My fall semester, right? Mm -hmm. This fall semester? I, yeah, I think, or was it summer, during summer, I think. I can't remember when there. So I went to Miami last year in August because I was getting some of my artworks that had finished in a show. And I went to um, Young Arts in Miami and they, have a, they work with only artists under 18. And so I ended up linking up with them. And so if any artists come to me that are under the age of 18 and um, every single year they do the same contest, right? It's a contest. Yeah. You have to submit your artwork and, mm -hmm. okay. So I came back and I told a few of the ones that were under 18 and Nathaniel was one of them. I think you were the, actually the only one who was like, yeah, I'll apply. And so he ended up submitting work, and you won the merit winner okay. award. Okay, right. And then so you got he got like a cash prize. And did yeah. you end up going to Miami for the for little ceremonies and stuff? No, they said though like you're gonna go to Miami in spring during spring. Oh, okay. And stuff. So okay, so that's you. That hasn't come yeah, up yet. Yeah, I think his spring hasn't came yet. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but Still that was super enough. cool. Yeah. Or I think you're talking about the event where the the ones who won national went, I think. Oh, so the nationals were the ones that went just this, like, that January went to, or that, something. Yeah, that went okay. to the ceremony and did the master classes, I think. Okay, so, that makes sense. Yes. Okay. But, yeah, I was super excited that you won that, too. <laughs> yeah, I know. So what's something that you would, like, like for the younger artists, that are like your age and under, um, what would you recommend to them? Like, do you apply to a lot of stuff? Like you're super, you're winning awards, you're, you're doing like good, like great stuff for your art career, for your future. What would you recommend kids your age doing to start setting themselves up? Um, Especially if they don't have parents or people around them that can lead them. Do you, did you have people leading you or did you want to do this on your own and so you kind of like had your own ambition to like reach out? Uh, well, I had my mom. Well, she was the one who made my Instagram account okay. and was getting me, well, I would just say to uh, get yourself out there basically because when you do if you get out of your comfort zone mm -hmm. then um yeah you'll start getting that exposure right and also uh keep doing what you're doing honestly i have to keep doing what, what i'm doing in order to get more exposure exactly. uh and to also not only support other people but to support myself as well mm -hmm. so um yeah and um uh, it doesn't matter if you start off with yourself or with somebody, just 
keep on doing what you're doing and get yourself out there and don't stay in your shell all day. Right. So. Do you yeah. feel like your mom helped you like get out of a shell? Oh, she she did, and also my art teacher, Mr. Ballas, who has um, been teaching me since eighth grade. Okay. He's still, and now he's my teacher uh, last year and this year. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, he and my mom, um, they both were the ones who tell me, you know, hey, you can try something new, yeah. basically. And, you know, it did raise my, it made me feel more confident. Right. In myself and also in my work. Having people and, like behind you yes, to like and, help you. Yes, it's what made me a little more independent. Because mm-hmm. I was very shy as well. Right. Um, I think that's what so. Cynthia said. She's like, I've seen Nathaniel grow like so much. She's like, oh. when I first met him, um, with like the first shows she did with you, she's like, he was kind of shy and you know, like <laughs> a was. little quiet. I was. She's like, but now I see him like. Um, she's seen you at the shows and he's like talking to people and he's telling people about how his like what he was doing with his art and stuff like that she's like I'm so proud of him I was like I just met him recently so I've seen you the same way like just you're confident about your art and I think that's something we actually all have to work on like at first right like Pearl and I have talked about it being confident getting and you know getting yourself out there also what everyone needs to work on because if you get yourself out there, then yes, it's how you can find, um, it's how you can express yourself is getting yourself out there right. and doing what you do, basically. Right. So, mm-hmm. No, that makes sense. And yeah. I feel like a lot of, like, when I was younger, I always felt like people wouldn't like my art. Like, so it was like almost like not motivated to make art because I didn't feel like anybody would like what I was making Mm -hmm. and it wasn't until recently that I realized like I have a style and not everybody's gonna like it but the people people that do like the people that like it they love it and they buy it and Mm -hmm. you kind of have to find your like uniqueness and actually the last time when I went I went to Miami's Art Basel not last year but the year before and that's like and I've told her it's like um, artists from everywhere come and you have to submit your work and you, it costs a lot of money to have a spot in Art Basel but like rich people go and buy their artworks during that time and I remember walking in and maybe this is a like in a bad way you get motivated it's good but like you see some people's art and like I walked into one person's room and I don't know who the artist was I walked in and there was it looked like they took like a, a dirty shirt and like oh, I remember dumped it into like some <laughs> kind of like paper mache or something and like picked it up and like splatted on the floor and let it dry however it splat is how it dried and the only thing in their room was that and that was art and I like I looked at it and I was like okay if that can be an art basil I can be an art basil and it's almost yeah. like this like it's like this little confidence you get from seeing like okay you're walking around and you're seeing artworks where like someone just splat paint like looks like they just splat it one time and left and you look at the price tag and those yeah, like pieces those, are like ten thousand like dollars and you're like pieces you see at the McNay and at the, mm-hmm. the uh, other art museum. I even saw a video was considered art. It was just like the McNay was showing a little video of a boat on a lake. Just oh, and, and that, that was, was art. art. Yeah. So like that's just the thing is like <laughs> or, yeah. stuff like that gives you confidence in like this weird way it it's because it it's weird thing you're not making it. Yeah, you're not <laughs> because it doesn't really have a it it doesn't okay. really need a meaning. Right, it, basically, because it's. I mean, art is subjective, right? yes. and you're expressing yourself. Yes, I do landscapes. Some people like it. I do landscapes because I just love them. They keep me calm. Right. And I do hyperrealism because I think different kinds of objects are um, just cool and fascinating to me, right. to the eyes. So, um, yeah, it doesn't really have. It doesn't really need a meaning. Exactly. That's if yeah. you. That's if you want to express a different meaning. To right. It. But you know, it can be any art can be anything. So, exactly. Yeah. Actually, when he brought his Uno pieces to me, I was they're they're crumpled up, and you can see them on his website or on the Instagram, like close up. But they're like crumpled up, and then like brought back 
like to normal, but they have that little crinkly look already. Mm -hmm. And I was like, where did you get that idea? Like, did you just see that like on Google or what? And what did you tell me? <laughs> oh, I, one time I was playing Uno with my brothers and I lost. Because you said I, you guys Yes, like, I get, I, we were very competitive. <laughs> okay. So yes, I got mad. I crumbled, I crumbled my card. And I'm like, oh my god, this actually looks cool. I think I'm gonna draw. <laughs> right. So <laughs> they actually have a meaning. That's yes, that's his passionate anger <laughs> with Uno. Yeah. It catches people's attention too, because I've had like a DM once and he's like, Oh, who's the artist that like mm -hmm. made or made a crumbled right. email card? And I was like, Oh, it's this Nathaniel. Like, yeah. And it's and it's funny because like other people like my art, but I think this person was like, oh, your art's okay, but oh my gosh, this is really cool. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. But like that's just how it is. Like different things capture different things. No, exactly. Different eyes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that, like, I wish I would have known that or somebody would have told me that when I was young because if I, if somebody would have told me like, well, maybe this person doesn't like it, but this person will buy it. Yeah. I probably would have been like, oh, okay. And I've I, seen so much different art styles be like successful. I've exactly. seen the most simplest oh my God. thing and the most hyper realism thing and they're all right. successful mm -hmm. because there's different like, there's an audience for everything. Exactly. There's different kinds of audiences. Kind of like music, country, rock. Oh, there's definitely. Different. Yeah. <laughs> there's different kinds of audiences and everything. Mm -hmm. So I've just been recently um, like looking into um, licensing my art, licensing my design, and I actually just got my first contract. So my lines oh. are gonna be on wallpapers. And I've been looking at all the different kind of things, like all the different designers, because like once you're licensing your art, mm -hmm. you are like an artist and designer because your things are actually going on to like pillowcases and yeah. stuff that goes in a home and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Or something on or your office. Phone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so, oh yeah, look, I got a little phone case. Oh my God, it my looks eyes. so good in person. Yeah. <laughs> I thought so, it was like matte. And like when I looked on on, on Instagram, mm -hmm. I thought it was like all matte finish. No, but now it, no it's, it's, like it's a, actually glossy. It's like I a real really phone case, it. and I yeah. like dropped my phone and everything, and I was like, cool, like oh I gosh. can have. So, so like you can do that too, like yeah. as long as it's not something um, copyrighted. <laughs> so people, you could definitely like, and I could tell you the sites and stuff that you could put your art on, mm -hmm. but the way I found out about it that I could license my art because I've always like walked into like Hobby Lobby and seen like little art pieces and been like who did that and that's cute and how did they get their art in here so I started looking it up and I ran into this girl on YouTube she does and it's super adorable super super adorable she does like the simplest little I think I showed you like little watercolor flowers super light but like she has those little simple watercolor painting or her little design on planners and the planners go to um, Office Depot now and she has just all these like stationery she does a lot of stationery so planners um, little cards stuff like that but she's in like Target with her stationery and like it just made me realize like you can't underestimate yourself like mm -hmm. if she can get her little watercolor flowers into Target, um, Office Depot, Staples, all those companies, then what's stopping us from being able to put our art, your landscapes, your watercolors, like on designs and get into stores too. Mm -hmm. Cause honestly, after I like found out about it, I just reached out to, I've been reaching out to companies still and I submit my art. And I, I think like a week later is when I got in contact with the, it's called AJ Wallpaper. And they accepted me and they sent me the contract. I just signed contracts. So now I'm gonna start sending them my designs. But it just made me realize like, we can do so much with our art. And I wish I would have started this when I was younger. I know. When I was your age. Yeah, I had a problem with us for me, un underestimating myself. Yeah. Even before I started, I'm like, I think no one's gonna buy this. But those artworks, gone right someone bought it yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah i think too i follow some really young i don't know if you follow any of them but i follow some like young artists like nine years old Aww. um 10 years Aww. old who are like one does like cubism and it's super cool like it's like 
it's a badass painting and they have like so many followers and I think it's cool to see a kid doing badass art mm -hmm. and that makes them popular because they're unique because they're under the age of 18 creating things that us adults are afraid nobody will buy and so I think like younger kids like you should definitely um of course under parent parental supervision get like a little art instagram and start posting your work and following other artists and engaging because you could get yourself popular mm -hmm. before you're even to an age where you're working or going to college or any it of gets that harder. yeah mm -hmm. like when you get older oh my gosh yeah it's like all that stuff right <laughs> <laughs> but i feel like you're like one of the reasons why I want to have maybe have your mom come on is because like your mom actually like she encourages you mm -hmm. she gets you involved and she probably like even is like Nathaniel come on like let's go know, or, you yeah. know like, she, that support you needed I'm sure oh like, my when gosh. you doubted yourself she was there oh, for you, you know, because not just yeah. really like not special it's important no to definitely like mm -hmm. i look up to her because i'm like you actually like uh, not a lot of parents um can handle when like your kid says i want to be an artist when i get older they mm -hmm. don't know what to do and it's not their fault either because they might not be artistic or care much about it mm -hmm. but like they don't know what to do where to lead you or maybe they don't even know all the ways you can make money like we do now. exactly like, yeah how even us yeah like, we're still learning like mm -hmm. like I just learned about the art licensing and like how to do it and how to submit your work because you have to submit it differently you have to make yourself like a little brand book you have to um, you have to do it in a different way it's different than going to a gallery and submitting artwork Definitely. but I think like a lot of parents just don't they really don't know what to do when their kid says I want to be an artist um, and even some art teachers, like you've been fortunate enough to have art teachers that like motivate you. Mm -hmm. Some are just there to teach art and go home and yeah. they don't care if it's your passion or if that's what you want to do when you get older. And so some yeah. people aren't even getting led the way you were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like I remember like my mom, well, she's very supportive, but like I remember when I was younger, um, when I was, when a doctor diagnosed me with autism when I was four, he told my mom that I would never talk and that I would never be independent again. And so through my um, ele my younger years, my mom, you know, she would kind of get scared if I go out somewhere by myself or mm -hmm. get lost easily because, um, you know, it's just that thing that the doctor said got kind of stuck got in, in her head, head basically. But like she knew I had something. When You've I'm definitely drawn. proven him yeah. wrong. Oh, definitely. I've proven a lot of people wrong. Like, yeah. Even because uh, I remember during elementary, um, a lot of kids, and well, I remember a lot of teachers never wanted me to be in their classrooms, because, you know, I was I had a lot of autistic symptoms. Like I used to stem a lot, to rock a lot, I used to. Uh, I had bad sensory issues and I used to, it was hard for me to learn in okay. general. Right. And I was also kind of low on knowledge. So they did not want me in their classrooms. They kept on transferring me into, I don't know how many element, I don't That's know how, I, ele I don't know how many elementary school they went to. Uh, I, I just don't know. And then I went to like three different middle schools. So we moved a lot just to find you know better support for me and my brother Isaac who also has autism right. and um, you know I did have a lot of speech therapists and occupational mm -hmm. therapists they helped somewhat but um, I don't know I think it's just art like creating it was my missing puzzle your little niche. It, was, it, it was what it was what was missing in right. me. and when I found it um, at the right time then that it it just cured me yeah like it like it, it it just it made me more uh confident it made me express myself more uh, exactly. basically i basically find who i was finally right so, yeah well, like what you're supposed to do mm -hmm. well like i my brother is autistic and he has you 
you like you can kind of tell like when someone's autistic they have something they're so so good at mm -hmm. and that's the one thing they kind of have to stick to it's their comfort but it's also they're super good at it it's almost like every single little power that they have goes into that and that's where you can like grow with that. Like one of the other, I have another artist and he's autistic, but he can't really talk or like function very well. But she says the only, his mom says the only time he sits down and isn't running around is when he's painting. If she mm -hmm. sticks a paint and canvas and brush in front of him, he's like quiet, he's in his zone. And that's where she knows Art might be the only place that he, because he's lower on the spectrum, art might be the only place that he'll be able to grow and make any kind of income for himself, like as an adult. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm, I have him in the gallery too, but I think it's just you two. But um, Cynthia, when I've gone to the Art for Autism, and she's with the, the Autism Treatment Center, she's always like, check out all the artists. And the last time I saw one guy and I went to go get something to eat and I came back and he was already packed up so I don't remember what his name was but I was actually gonna like talk to him and be like hey like do you want to show your art like in a gallery or like try and grow or something because I do understand that like when you have that desire that's kind of like what you're supposed to do and that's how you'll grow yeah. and you definitely like prove it for sure mm -hmm. yeah definitely <laughs> uh, it's really good so um as far as like shows and stuff like when did you start your first shows was that with Cynthia um it was before Cynthia my first show was at the break I remember and then uh after like how did you oh that was okay so that one was with Cynthia right the break okay. after was no it was um oh I, that was cool I actually signed up and I, okay. I was also put in the paper by SA Current and then after that was when we met Cynthia for the art for autism kind okay. of deal and then we signed a contract with her and then um yeah that's when I started doing shows with with them with the autism okay. treatment center I guess that was my question like how did you get into the blue star or like like if other artists are interested in doing that like how did you get into that show um basically my mom contacted them okay. and they she did tell them that I was 13 and they were gonna get me into this one show that happened before though it was um, um, I, don't, I think it was their unicorn show mm -hmm. but I couldn't go because it was very um, like they like they said in the show they were gonna have like um, naked woman being painted on. Oh, okay. So, so they didn't they allow you to be there? Yeah, okay. they also had some artworks that had, that, that just had, you know, profanity and oh, okay. such. So that makes child appropriate. It, was, yeah, it yeah. wasn't appropriate for me, so. Right. Um, yeah, but, but yeah, and they're like, but we can get you in this show. And, and then we are like, yeah, let's do it. Let's, that way. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I, and then, when I got into the art for autism, that's when I got more exposures. I remember one, um, one guy. I think he was a journalist, and yeah, he interviewed me. And then Telemundo was supposed to interview me, but the oh, thing nice. is, I but the thing is, I didn't know Spanish. Oh, okay. so <laughs> yeah, you could have a translator. Well, yeah, but like they do want their whoever's on the show to speak Spanish to actually so, yeah. talk. Um, yes, that's right. that's that. That's Telemundo. <laughs> so, no, it is. Yes. When, um, when at the um, Day of the Dead celebration, yeah. um, I was live painting there, and one of the news ladies, she liked what I was doing and everything, and she was like, do you speak Spanish? I was like, yeah, but I'm not like super comfortable to like be on TV and like interview with my Spanish. And she was like, oh, okay. She's like, well, she's like, I'm gonna get your girl, the girl I was painting and she's like um i'm gonna take her up there so we can do like a little live interview she's like i'll call you over and she never called me over and i was like oh yeah i was like and everybody that was with us that day was so mad at me they're like jackie you could have done it like your spanish is fine i'm like not on tv like 
I would have gotten so. Would have been fine. I've heard you speak Spanish to my mom though. It's no, fine. I would not have been fine. fine. I would have lost any Spanish I knew at that moment <laughs> if I had <laughs> it, like just blank. being on TV and having to speak Spanish. Yeah. And so it made me realize they don't want anybody who's not speaking Spanish. Yeah, I'm on. not. I'm just. I'm just not good at Spanish. I don't know why, but I'm just <laughs> not. My mom knows a little bit, but. She's not that good either. <laughs> Even my older brother, I remember him speaking, I don't know, like fluent Spanish when he was very little, but now he just, uh, he does, he, he can't I speak it happens. anymore. Yeah. yeah, you remember some words, but then you forget. Yeah. yeah, I think you start getting used to speaking English all the time, but like your Spanish just gets kind of like, <laughs> yeah. Bland. Should not use it here. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. But I don't know how it's hard. Uh, I, it's so hard to keep up with two languages. <laughs> well, that's what Bill and Mama did want to interview you. I'm sure you'll have a lot more like interviews, anyways. Oh, pretty much. Wait, yeah, like for much. like the news, like getting getting you on there. Oh, probably. Yeah. 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 So, do you have plans after high school, like art plans or? Um, I was gonna. My parents want me to apply at a. Um, SAC, San Antonio College, because my mom went there for makeup school. Oh, okay. And what's good about them is that they have free tuition and they can they can let you have just one class that you want to really focus on. Okay. So, which is what she did, and because when I try to apply some colleges like UT or other places, mm -hmm. they're like, okay, you have to do some requirements they right. want you to take some classes <laughs> some, some AP uh, no it's like some out some calculus classes and other Use stuff yeah, I know like random stuff. <laughs> even that like, even out I even I even tried applying at like some art schools like um, Kansas City Art Institute and mm -hmm. um, the Art Institute of Chicago but they're like okay but you first need to take Art history, art appreciation. Those ones aren't too bad though, compared to, uh, I couldn't pass anything that was math. So like that was my issue when it came to college. I just but, couldn't get it down. But yeah, but like, uh, but like there's just some classes where I don't really, uh, I don't even need those classes because mm -hmm. like painting is like my main focus. Right, <laughs> so, you yeah. don't want all the Especially other ones. Especially when he's already like oh. ready to go, you know, exactly, like where yeah. he doesn't yeah. really need to learn basics. Like, mm -hmm. Is that what you want to do? Just keep painting and like... Keep painting. My mom wants me to get more management and management. more gu and more guidance. So, okay. yeah. yeah. You know, be more professional, you know. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and then you're going to be a part of... So we finally made like an official date for the first... Um, the first Young, Young Arts, Arts Market. And so that's gonna be March 25th, and it'll be during the daytime. So mm -hmm. like probably from like 11 to six, um, I'm still getting all the young artists and all of them are gonna be pretty much the younger of the young arts. Um, I'm gonna try and keep that to a certain like age group. Um, yeah. Preferably like maybe 25, 27 and under, but you're gonna be there and he's gonna, he sells prints. So he's gonna, are you gonna bring in any of your landscapes? Probably, yeah. You should, where's your big one? You just did a really large one. How big is that one? Wait, which one? Is that the one in your school? Uh, the, the large one? The big, the big, big one? Yeah. That's for my school installation. Oh, okay. My teacher wants me to, well, I'm almost, I'm kind of almost done with it, but a lot of stuff is going on. Like recently, the, the culinary department at my school wants me to create some drawings, hyper-realistic drawings of food. Oh my gosh. And that, 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 that will be, I'm actually excited for that. Yeah. So, I'm, I have a lot of stuff this semester. Like, uh, I recently, I won regionals at base. Okay, and right. I was only one student out of my entire school to go to state at That's San amazing. Marcos in April. Uh, which is after my birthday, after I turned 18. So, mm -hmm. so exciting. Yeah. How long <laughs> yeah. do these hyper realistic, like if, how long do they take you? So I remember <laughs> doing this, these two in my sophomore, at the end of my sophomore year. Mm -hmm. This one took me like four, four-ish days. 
that one took me a week. Four days of you like working on it, like for the whole amount of time, or like just a certain amount of hours. Certain amount of hours. Okay. I usually stay up. Um, even in my school nights, I usually stay up doing work. And okay. my mom used to catch me, and she was like, "Hey, go to bed." <laughs> and then that one too. Um, you said about a week. A week, yes. It, okay. it took me a week. The bigger ones? Um, the bigger, this one, I remember it took me almost a month. Um, and I did this one during the summer, like, when I was an upcoming junior. This one took me um, also a month, and I did this one last year. That one I also did my sophomore year. That one did took me that long. It took me, like, three days. This one, I'm... Oh, so you're fine. Okay. Yeah, this one though took me like, yeah, three so days. You can tell I'm in the way for that Th one. This one, um, I was actually inspired by what my dad brought because my dad used to do beach to beach trucking. Okay. And, um, yeah, he went to Vegas and then. And he brought you back Bell? Yeah, he brought back something. He brought back a, a globe, I think. Okay. A snow globe, a, a magnet, and I want to draw the magnet actually. And, uh, but yeah, this one he bought. And then I wanted it, and I'm like, oh, this looks cool. I feel like drawing it. It's amazing. It's, uh, <laughs> thank you. This one, though, it took me like, uh, it took me like a day. Okay. It's because it's, it's not that big. You right. Know? My recent one, though, it took, it, it took me a whole night. Is it bigger or is it smaller? It's small. It's smaller. It's the same size, actually. Okay. Um, but that one took me a little longer, though. It took me like a day and a half because I, I, it has more detail than that one and right. a little more improvement um, as well because I haven't done hyperrealism in a long I did this one last year and I took like a break on hyperrealism and my recent golf ball um, which is already on my Instagram and website um, I saw I, I can see that it has it did improve um, you think so from that golf ball oh um, yeah definitely <laughs> So, I want to see it. Yeah. The one I want to see is your big, like, your big installation. Oh, yeah. That one, I'm ready to, I'm just ready for it to go in and be displayed at my school. So, yeah. so exciting. Yes, so, that will be exciting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, you can come back, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, you can come back. <laughs> what, okay, so if anybody wants to look you up, like, what's your website? Um, It is um, ngarza at Google Sites. Um, I think I have it on my phone, yeah. you or, you, or you can just go, it's it's linked on my Instagram, okay. and my Instagram is at Nathaniel Garza down slash fine art, okay. you can go to my Instagram, and then on my, in my, in my bio, there's, at the bottom, there should be my website. Okay, there. and then on your website, can people buy your prints and stuff, like place yes, an order? There, yes, there's Google, I make Google Forms for those, okay. and I can get those responses, and I can, and when I get those responses, I can email them. I always check my forms daily, okay. so yes, I can, I can email you back, and we can, and if you want it shipping, then yes, it will cost an additional Extra five dollars. Um, and if you want a local delivery, then yes, we can set up a date, a time, and location, and then I'll I'll be there. So see, I feel like you're already doing stuff that like we barely started doing like, for ourselves, <laughs> like at our age. Yeah. So yeah. Well, I'm glad we had you. That's exactly why I wanted to have him was because he's just started. I feel like you started your art career already. Like you were 13 in shows and he's 17 now and he's got the website and I don't even have my website. I, help me with my website. I need a website. <laughs> I'm not good at websites. And I've asked like different people like help me with the website, but like I can't even get myself motivated to want to sit there and like start a website. But the fact that you already have all that like established and going for you, that's good because you're ahead of the game. And I think it'd be, it's good for like just other young kids to like know that they can get ahead also like mm -hmm. start their Instagram um, work on a little website post your stuff um, post little time lapses you post time lapses and they're cool mm -hmm. right yeah I used to do like that like pictures and stuff I need to start doing that because I have a camera so I have an actual camera because I used to do it with my phone but yeah I'm gonna start doing more time lapse videos probably yeah. so but yes. yeah so this is Nathaniel and
Yeah. But I think so. The next episode, um, I want to talk about um, taxes because I went to my tax guy and I got some information about just stuff that like artists should do like for doing their taxes and you're gonna need to know that too because once you start like getting out there and like making money then it's good to know like the kind of stuff we need to keep track of and stuff like that so my tax guy gave me a whole sheet and I was like okay I'll share this thanks mm -hmm. so yeah so yeah so thanks guys <laughs> Bye.